Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love Online. We're living in a strange time, y'all. And there are things that we're not really expecting, but we need to watch and pray and be very aware because the unexpected, it's going to be a lot of weird things going on. But we have to remember who's in control and we have to make a choice. Who are we? Whose side are we on? Are we going to be counted as part of God's remnant? Or are we going to be told, I never knew you? What choices are we going to make, y'all? What are you going to decide from day to day, from moment to moment? How are you going to conduct yourself knowing that he's on his way? That we are at the last hour of the last days? Think about that. We're going to Romans chapter 11, and we're going to start at verse 4, because I'm not reading that storyline. I'm reading these particular lines for a reason. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. I'm going to scoot down. Verse 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest was blinded. Verse 8. According as it is written, God has given them a spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. Now, the reason I'm saying that, we've got people who, by name, by profession, are born-again Christians. They have asked the Lord to forgive them. They have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Such are you, such am I. But there are some that still bow to Baal. There are some that live a life of compromise. In these last days, it's it's like a person that gets a call. Let me share this with you. Imagine I give you a call and I'm warning you because you're getting ready to drive all the way to Vegas or you're driving all the way to Frisco or whatever that I heard from one of my friends who works for the CHP that the freeways are going to be lined with with, uh, traffic cops. They're going to be lined with law enforcement. Why? Because they are cracking down on traffic violations. So be careful how you drive because you don't know where they're going to come out from, but they're going to lay in wait for all you guys driving the long distance on the freeways. Now, I give you that warning. Are you going to get on the freeway with your pretty new car and your high-powered engine, rev that baby up, and put the pedal to the metal in spite of what I told you? Are you going to take your chances and throw caution to the wind and pound that pedal, gas up that car, and hit the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, hit that floor down to 100 miles an hour, flying past everybody, weaving in and out, hightailing it. You going to throw caution to the wind? Or are you going to, in spite of your desire to let her rip, are you going to slow that baby down, slow your roll, and use caution as you drive? so that you don't end up with a moving violation that you're going to have to pay through the nose to cover financially. Are you going to throw caution to the wind or or are you going to use self-control and slow your roll? What are you going to do? How are you going to handle that? Well, that's kind of what we do in life as born-again Christians. We see the signs, the writings on the wall, even unsaved unbelievers know 
that we're in the last days. We're on the last hour. We're at that last turn, y'all. And we know something's getting ready to happen. But the thing is, many of you born-again Christians, quote-unquote, are throwing caution to the wind. You're letting it rip. You're doing whatever you can get away with doing. In spite of what you know the Word says, in spite of what you heard in Bible study or Sunday school or what you heard your grandma say or your grandpa or your big brother or whatever, whatever you, whoever has been the one to plant the seeds of righteousness in you, it's almost like you're treating it like a fable, like a, an old wives' tale. And you throw caution to the wind and you do whatever you're big and bad enough to do. But see, God knows who it is. Do you notice he said 7,000? Do you know what's weird about that number? Look at the population that covers this earth. If you take 7,000, I'm just using that literally for right now. If you take 7,000 people, did it say seven or 70? I don't want to misquote the word. Let me look at it. 7,000, not 70, seven. If you can imagine 7,000 people and you count all the people in the world, even if you go back a thousand years, 7,000 is nothing when you look at the population around the world that covers the globe. 7,000? You can get that in one city. So if you can imagine that small of a number, even when the rapture happens, do you know it may not be that noticeable? That's the scary part. Have you heard from so-and-so? No, I, I noticed I saw him yesterday, but I haven't seen him since. It could be such a small number that it's barely noticeable, y'all. That right there is scary. When you think about it, I'm just trying to get you to picture how small that remnant number might be. Out of all these churches, five or six churches, every two or three block radius in some of these big cities. And you sit up here and some churches have 100, some have 50, some have 500, some have 5,000. But the bottom line is, picture that, 7,000 people that have not bowed their knees to Baal. What ridiculously small number of the followers of Christ are going to be the ones that are taken up in the rapture? How many of you are going to miss the boat? How many? Think about that. that. That's a scary thought. I can't tell you how many times I ask the Lord, show me what I need to work on. I do not want to miss out on the first, on the first shipment. I want to be on the first thing out of here. I, the first thing flying, I want to be out here with the Lord. I do not want to be left behind. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be left behind. There is no mischief on this planet that is worth having to go through the tribulation period. I do not want to go through any of it, part of it, any of it, all of it, whatever. I do not want to go through it. I want out. So in my private life, when nobody can see me, I live alone. I can get away with murder if I want to. I watch my thoughts, I watch my feelings, my attitudes, all the unspoken sins that nobody knows about but you and God and the demons that manipulate. The only ones that know, and I'm very careful, I'm not the standard, y'all, because just like you, I fall short of the glory of God, but I am found daily trying to meet the mark. I am aiming at, for the prize of the high calling of God. I am not sitting up there settling for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth best, because guess what? Nothing beats walking with the Lord 
in integrity. Nothing beats walking with the Lord in genuineness and honesty. Do you hear me? So whatever you do, don't think you got a few pet sins that God's just going to wink at. Don't think you can get by without talking to brother so-and-so or sister banana head because they offended you last year. Don't think you can get away with staying away from that family member and not talking to them because they don't deserve your forgiveness. Don't think you can get away with ignoring people because you don't want to be bothered with them not being on your side and patting you on the back every time you want to pat and jumping on your side every time you want a defense. Don't think that you can get away with those little underhanded sinful ways. Don't think that because that's the stuff you're going to be judged by. The stuff nobody knows about but God. What does he say? I judge the heart. God judges your heart, baby. So going in through here, it's time to clean up. It's time to do some spring cleaning. It's time to get rid of some old trash all that old baggage, get rid of it, baby. It's useless. It will do nothing but weigh you down. And there's nothing sadder than seeing a little kid let go of a helium balloon and watch the balloon hover and settle down onto the ground when it should have been soaring up into the air. You don't want to be that helium balloon that ends up on the ground because you let the sins of the world weigh you down. You don't want to do that. So remember the times we're in. Whatever you do, remember the times you are in. You know, I really enjoy the sisterhood I have in my online church. Um, it, it's really cute when Lynn and I get on the phone and we get to talking and, and we're it, it's like you can tell that we're going through our personal lives with a fine tooth comb. We don't want to tolerate anything. When I talk with my best friend, Pat, we've been friends for like 40, 41 years. And you look at that and, and, and we're talking about different things from time to time. And you can tell we're going through ourselves with a fine tooth comb. You know how exciting it is to be yoked up with sisters and brothers that are true blue, sisters that don't compromise, sisters that don't half step. We're not perfect. Oh, we can sit there and list each other's faults and list our own faults for that matter. But guess what? We're not making those faults set up camp. We're steadily battling those faults. That's what I'm talking about. It's not about being perfect. It's about striving for perfection. Because the more you strive for perfection, the more peace you're going to have, the more joy you're going to have. See, when you please God, God pleases you. And when he pleases you, you got the joy of the Lord. When you have the joy of the Lord, you got his strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So if you're half-stepping in any way, if you're slipping and sliding in any way, if your steps are slippery and greasy, oh, that's a perfect setup for a fall. If your attitude is slimy and slippery, and you got contaminants all up in that attitude that you justify and rationalize. Guess what, baby? Your heart has got darkness in it. And if your heart has got darkness in it, all of you is dark. All is dark. All. Not part. All. Because it starts in the heart. That's the root right there. The root of the matter right there in your heart. So we have to go through constant self-evaluation. We've got to go to the Lord with truth and honesty. And see, one of the things that will not allow you to be honest with God is your pride. Your pride is one of those things that will weigh that little helium balloon down. When you think you're floating up into the presence of God, all of a sudden a little pride shows up, here you come 
descending again back down to the ground. Why? Because sin's not going to enter there. God's not going to have a bunch of sin in his presence. He's, he's not going to cohabit with it. It's just not what he does. He's not going to be your other lover, y'all. He's not playing that. So going through this time, you have to know, recognize the signs, recognize what's going on. But you must be watchful. Don't become one of those whose eyes have been darkened. Don't become one of those who have been dummied down, who have been uh, numbed by everything going on around you. Don't let your love wax cold because of the iniquity of many. Because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. Don't be in that number. Whatever you do, don't make allowances for yourself. Do you hear what I'm saying? Mm. Okay. So we know it's not about legalism or else none of us would make it. Trust me. It's about grace. But when you're living by grace, you also have to put forth an effort. Whatever you do, you still have to put forth an effort. You're saved by grace. You're saved by faith. But you have to be kept. And you cannot be kept living any or which way. God is not the author of confusion. You're either this or you're that. Now, I'm not trying to come across in an indicting way. I'm trying to make it plain. You cannot walk into the staff door of the White House without your credentials, without your identifying badge, without clearance, without the right attire. You can't. You're not going to get in. Security will block you out. You might be the sweetest person in the world. And that's the same way a lot of people think you're going to get into the kingdom of God. Dressed any old way, living any old way, doing any old thing they're big and bad enough to do. But when that door shuts and you come knocking and the voice on the other side says, while the door stays closed and locked, I don't know you. I don't know who you are, ye that work iniquity. Don't take chances. Don't play Russian roulette with your souls. Please don't. Now, for those of you who are living for the Lord, who are walking with him, who have not bowed the knee to Baal, who are not compromised with the works of this world, you have presented your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And you have not conformed to this world, but you have allowed yourself to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12, 1 and 2. You know that you're doing everything you can. We, you know, we're not always putting forth our best foot forward. But our lifestyle is of such that we are striving to please God. We're striving to line up with the manual that's been placed in our hands. That manual being the Bible, the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's your manual. That's your roadmap. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now, knowing that you are striving with the Lord, you are working in cooperation with the word, with the Lord, with his ways, guess what? When Jesus comes, he's going to look at you and he's going to know you because you have taken the time to know him. You have walked according to his ways, but how could you walk according to his ways unless you read his word? You have read his word. You have indulged yourself in prayer, in word, in his presence, around God's people. 
You have lived a life exemplary to a Christian. People don't have to wonder who you belong to. It's written all over you, baby. Oh, that's one of them. That's one of them. And because they know, they don't have to wonder who you are. They know because you make it known. Why? You're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Be encouraged, y'all. Your redemption draws nigh. Hold your head up. Don't be down. Don't be fretful. Don't worry. Don't fear. God is mindful of you. Why? Because he has not forgotten your labor of love. So for those of you who are truly in Christ, all the way in him, all up under his armpits, as I say, remember, he knows who you are. He doesn't have to wonder. He doesn't have to take attendance. He already knows because you're connected. You're connected in your heart. You're connected from your soul. You're connected in every fiber of your being. You're connected. Because everything you do, everything you say, every choice you make is taken account. You have a, 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 what's the word? How does the word say it? <clears throat> you have acknowledged the Lord in all your ways. Mm -hmm. So that he could direct your path. You're hooked up with him. You're yoked up with him in every way, shape, and form. He knows it. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You're in there. Hook, line, and sinker. You're in there with him. You're not a fair weather friend. You're not the one that as soon as trouble arises, as soon as storm clouds come, you're mad at God because he didn't allow the sun to shine. You're not one of those. You're not a fair weather friend. You're there with God through thick and thin. You have taken up your cross and followed him. And God knows your name. Remember that. So you be encouraged. Those of you who are the true remnant of God. Who have not bowed your knee to Baal. You are a true remnant of God. God bless you. You be encouraged. But I pray for the rest of you. If you haven't made that decision, you think again. You say, Lord, I may not believe. I may not understand. I may not get it. I hear all this negative stuff about what it means to walk with you. All your demands and requirements and commandments. Guess what? I don't care how many doubts you have, how many fears you have. Get to know this one, baby. It's the best love you will ever get in your life. All the power, all the, all the things you need on the inner man, all the questions that you just can't get answers to, you will know as you follow on to know. But you must first step up to the door and say, Lord, I open it, come in. I may not get you, I may not get your people, I may not get your word or your ways, but I need more than what I have in this life. I want to do more than exist. Ask him into your heart, please. Ask him. Invite him in. Let him know you know, you recognize that you are toe up from the floor, up. <laughs> that you need help. And ask him to help you, heal you, strengthen you, open your eyes, give you wisdom, give you strength you've never had, give you a whole new you. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new when you're in Christ. So let's get in him all the way, y'all. For those of you who are half-stepping, get on, get on the right side of that fence. Quit straddling. Make up your mind. And for those of you who are plugging along with the Lord, not giving up no matter what, you stay there. You don't budge. You just get closer and closer. Keep striving and reaching higher and higher. Because with God, the sky is the limit. And honestly, there is no limit. You can reach as high as you choose. Just keep striving for holiness and reach for God's ways, for God's heart and for his smile. God bless you. Be encouraged. 
Keep looking, keep watching, keep praying, keep drawing close to God, whatever you got to do. Don't sidestep the one, the lover of your soul. Don't sidestep him. He's your only chance to redemption in Jesus' name, in this world and in the world to come. God bless you. Amen.